Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the update preview stream. This is Bugs here. I'm joined today by Artemis and Miss D. Say hi, guys. Hello, as always. Hi, hi, guys. So what do we got going on? Well, as always, we're here on staging and we are one week away from the update. So what we're going to do is go through what we're seeing on staging, what it looks like will be likely to come in the update for July. The And what is it? It's the July 4th update, isn't it? It is, yep. Yeah, nice. So again, one week from that, and we're on normal staging here, and we're seeing this uh, the past couple of weeks, we were on AUX2 a lot, and what we've seen in the past week is uh, several things from AUX2 get merged to normal staging, and then a couple things stay on AUX2, and that gives us kind of a better concept of what's possibly and likely to be coming in the update. So as always, we're going to go through what that is. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to do Misty underscore that's me in chat, and we'll get to as many questions as we have the opportunity to. And real quick with server wipes, if you're wondering what's going on with Rustified server wipes, it is the weekly Thursday wipes happening today. And so that's your mains, your smalls, your solos, and your Zen labs. And these are map wipes only, and they're happening at regular scheduled time, which is 3 p.m. local time for the region. And so that means EU already wiped like three hours ago. AUSEA wiped like 12, 13 hours ago. And the U.S. servers will wipe in two hours. And then everything will wipe again next week when the update and forced wipe comes. So what do we have going on over here on staging? Well, real quick, before we get into that, I do want to say Twitch Drops are coming back. And in fact, it looks like we're going to have Twitch Drops every month for the rest of the year. And that's going to be kicking off with the Fancy Orb Global Warfare 2 event happening at the end of July. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, the devs did announce they are planning on doing monthly Twitch drops, at least for the rest of the year. And it's going to feature a bunch of Rust creators and all that stuff. So that's going to be pretty cool. And we'll keep you posted on that as always. And also check out the current community blog on rust.facebunch.com for a little more information on that. Now also, what we've got going on, onto what is likely coming in the update next week. First and foremost, we got bikes. This is the new type of vehicle making its way in. And from the looks of it, there's at least four types of bikes. There's motor bikes and pedal powered bikes. And it looks like there's two of each. And then it looks like there's a one person and a two person variant for each of those type of bikes. And so we got a motorbike with a sidecar and just a plain old motorbike, and then we got a bicycle, and then we got a bicycle with like kind of a cart that uh, another person can fit in. And given these were on Aux 2 earlier in the month, and we saw them get textured, we saw them get more finalized and polished with regards to the physics and all that stuff, and now in this past week they were merged into normal staging, and so that's a very good sign that we'll see these go in the update next week. Now, of course, the motorbikes run on low-grade fuel, and the pedal-powered bikes, well, are powered by your little footsies. And you just find them basically around the map. They're not available for purchase or anything from what we're seeing. It looks like, like many other vehicles in the game, they are just spawning around roads and also near monuments around the map. And it does seem like the majority of the ones spawning are... Like, it's more likely to get a pedal-powered bike than it is to get a motorbike, as would probably make sense. But, yeah, you just find them around the map, pop some low-grade fuel in there if it is a motorbike, and then you can be on your way. Uh, no sign of a need to fix them up or anything like that. They seem to be spawning just good to go. They just need a little fuel in the fuel storage, and then you can be on your way. We're still going to do some testing over this next week as far as like repair, decay, and all that stuff. But I imagine the decay is going to be something similar to like what we see with other vehicles where if it's left outside, it will decay faster. But if you park it inside, it will have a bit of a slower decay rate. And we'll probably just repair them with a hammer and I'm guessing some metal frags and stuff like that. 
But these are the new bikes coming in and they do enable you to get across the planes of rust, especially on the motorbikes, uh, a lot quicker and uh, with a little more freedom. And so that's pretty cool. The other thing of note is both of these bikes do have kind of a boost or a sprint. So for the pedal powered bikes, you can hold left shift and it will uh, sprint for a little while. And they have the same thing with the motorbike, but the motorbikes, the sprint is actually referred to as boost. And uh, yeah, you can see, you can, you can get some air in these things. You can, uh, you can build ramps and drive them off ramps. I'm waiting for the first group of raiders to ramp up onto the top of a roof with a bunch of bikes and go at it that way, but we'll see. So this definitely opens up more possibilities in the game with regards to traversing around, and it's gonna be a cool addition from the looks of it. And as always, we're gonna have kind of a full, more detailed write-up in the update article for next week, so you as a player know all you need to know about how these bikes are entering the game. Now also, next on the list, we've got the traveling vendor. This is another thing that has been merged into normal staging this week and appears like it will make its entrance to the production game next week with the update. Now, if you missed it, the traveling vendor is, well, basically just that. It's a vendor, an ice cream truck style kind of rusted out uh, truck going around. It's got three vending machines and it's got a kind of what looks to be a randomized selection of things available. I believe there's just gonna be one traveling vendor per map. We did, I believe, spawn some of these in. But, and as with all this stuff, it is still a work in progress, so nothing's really finalized until next week when it goes live, and even then it is subject to change for balance reasons and things like that after the fact. But this week we can see the updated textures to this new traveling vendor. Originally when it was on Aux 2, it was more of like a white model. It had less detailing and less kind of rusty aesthetic. And now we can see that rusty aesthetic has been definitely implemented much more. And it is just kind of this old school ice cream truck. It's got three vending machines on it and it's got two peacekeeping turrets on the top. So if you do choose to shoot at it for some reason, well, it will shoot back pretty quickly and it will defend itself also, from what we were seeing, it is going to be indestructible. So you're not going to be able to raid this thing for any goodies inside. Uh, it will just, if you shoot at it, it will just shoot at you, but you're not going to be able to do anything with it or blow it up or anything like that. So it's probably best just to go buy some goodies from it. Now, speaking of those goodies, as I mentioned, it does seem to be a randomized selection of goods available for scrap. So everything is sold uh, for scrap. And an interesting thing that we are seeing with regards to this, and currently I believe we're just seeing this on the traveling vendor, but it could potentially be added to other MPC vendors around the map is a kind of dynamic pricing model. And the idea being that when people buy a certain item, after three people buy that item, the item will go up by roughly 10%, it looks like. And it will have a cap at some point on like the max price increase that you can have. But it is going to be an interesting dynamic for the economy of the game because if there's a really hot item that everyone wants that's for sale, the price might be really good to start, but then as more and more people buy it, the price will go up. And it has been speculated, potentially, this could be trialed here and then rolled out potentially for the other NPC vendors around Outpost and things like that. And I think if done right, that could be an interesting dynamic to the game and could get rid of some of these more unsavory metas that we might have in the game with regards to like fertilizer and stuff like that. So we'll keep an eye on this one. And basically what you need to know is you can see it on the map, on the in-game map, you can see the icon. You can run up to the thing and it'll stop and give you a chance to uh, to purchase some stuff. And if you happen to shoot at it, well, it will shoot back. So I encourage you not to. Now, also, we were last week looking at a new water-based vehicle, a single-person water-based vehicle called the DPV, the Diver Propulsion Vehicle. 
And that actually does not look to be coming in the July update. Uh, it is still back on AUX2, and I believe they want to do some more with regards to how it controls and navigates through the water and everything. So that does not appear to be entering the game next week. But what did make it to staging as well from the looks of it is the hood and cuffs functionality. And this is uh, two, new two new items basically, but kind of a new functionality and ability in the game where if you come across a downed player, you can pop a hood and cuffs on them and that kind of limits their ability uh, to do certain things. Uh, the hood, of course, limits their ability to see where they are. It also limits the ability to view the in-game map. When you have a hood on, you can kind of see a little bit out of the bottom, as we can see here. So you can kind of look around and maybe still have a sense of where you, roughly you might be, but your in-game map isn't going to work. And yeah, and uh, people can kind of push you around if you're in the cuffs. And so it's kind of this... Uh, this dynamic where if you get wounded, instead of just dying, you might actually be taken captive. And another interesting thing is if you do cuff someone and uh, stuff like that, then you can actually view their inventory. You can view their whole inventory, but you can only drag things in and out of their hot bar. So you can kind of get a sense for what they have. And then also if you are the cuffed person, you are unable to drag things in and out of your hotbar anymore. And then what there is is this kind of mini game where that has the timing of it has been greatly extended, where basically you can struggle. Is it E that you press or you hold to? Uh... So it's left click. Oh, left click. Okay, cool. So it's left click. And if you hold left click when you got the cuffs on, you can see you kind of start shaking around a little bit. And there is this progress bar that starts moving pretty slowly. I believe this is a 60 second progress bar in total. Um, and you'll notice that the progress bar stops if your captor pushes you. Now the progress bar isn't resetting each time that that's the case, correct? That's right, yeah, at the minute the, the progress is still there, but it just stops. Yeah, so the idea is you can kind of wiggle around and eventually get yourself out of these cuffs. And then once you're out of the cuffs, you can take the hood off. Uh, but if your captors are on top of it, then they can kind of keep pushing you around, kind of like a boat on the shore. And every time they do, it stops that progress bar of that mini game. And again, that mini game is literally just holding down left click at the moment as you kind of rile and wriggle about and try to get out of said cuffs. So this is an interesting new dynamic for the game that does appear to be coming in for the July update as well. And Can as you tell with Adam to stop speed hacking, please? I can't keep up. <laughs> I'm trying to escape. <laughs> and you can run around once you're yeah, picked sure, up. You yeah, can so run around for sure in those. <laughs> it's like, like a headless around, chicken. Hooded. Yeah, exactly. And trying to escape. But it's hard to see where you're going. And oh. also, you can't really mount anything, can you? Or can you mount No, um, no, you now? can't. But also, I've just noticed this time as well, it broke the cuffs when I, oh, um, when I did cuffs. successfully get out of them as well. Yeah, I didn't do that last week either. Cool. So that's a new thing. Try so it looks like... Try to see if you can get inside this vehicle and then take the hood on. Uh, how do you mean? Sorry. You can no. mount with the hood on. Uh, it's just... But yeah, if you've got you cuffs on, you can't hop on a vehicle and drive away. That'd be funny if you're like hooded and trying to drive a motorcycle around <laughs> yeah. and you can't even see where you're going. Yeah, that's but, not about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, you yeah. can look up, you can get a sense of it. Yeah. But yeah, that's the new dynamic of hood and cuffs. So prisoners coming into Rust for the update next week from the looks of it. And as with all this other stuff, we'll have a full kind of rundown of how these hood and cuffs work. It is subject to change at this point between now and next week. But we'll give you on the article next week a full rundown of how this is all going to work. And that looks to be just another new item and functionality that is coming in the update for July. Now, there's also some other things being worked on. We actually saw some initial work on crocodiles. So it looks like a new animal is coming on in at some point. And maybe this will be in conjunction with, there's been talks about a jungle biome or a new type of kind of biome like that. So maybe we'll see that biome and some new animals come in at some point in the near future. 
There's also some more work on wire slacking optimizations. So that wire slacking functionality that came in uh, with the last update, they've just been modifying it and tweaking it and improving it a bit every week. And so we saw some more of that this past week. There's also more work on the cliffs rework. And so that's gonna be all those cliffs around the procedurally generated maps. There's gonna be in the near future, just a bunch of new versions of that. They are gonna keep the old cliffs for things like custom maps that have already been implemented using those old cliffs. But it does look like a bunch of new cliff variants are gonna be coming in. And so the landscape of Rust, specifically the cliffy landscape of Rust, may soon be a little different. I don't think that these are necessarily going to make it in for the update next week, as it does seem to be a rather large body of work that requires some more testing, but uh, they are working on that a little bit more. They've also made it so that when a player right-clicks a shipping container block while holding the spray can, it selects the last used spray color in the pie menu by default instead of the color of the shipping container block that the player right-clicked on. So that's just a little quality of life thing when you're dealing with that shipping container skin. And it'll make it a lot easier if you want to make your whole base purple or red or whatever. You'll have less clicks and mouse movement required to do so. And then finally, there's also some more work on the Radtown Redux, which of course is the new type of monument that will be coming in. That's kind of a throwback to the Radtowns of Legacy. And it doesn't look like those are going to be coming in next week but we are seeing some good progress on those. And so maybe in August, we'll see that new Radtown Redux go live. And then one other thing I wanted to mention was it does look like if you ordered those U2's figurines, it does look like those are actually coming in. This would have been ordered back in December, but it looks like they are finally made and shipped out because there have been a couple people that have gotten those U2's figurines. <laughs> They've made these. What? When you get these motorbikes on the go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're a little. Yeah, and don't hit rusty. the trees. It is just gonna break. Pretty. Easy. But it bounces really good. Yeah, for sure. And people are gonna be launching motorbikes off hills and ramps all over the place. I imagine it's gonna be fun. And, uh, but yeah, those U2's figurines have uh, shipped out to a lot of people. A lot of people have just received them in the past day or two. So if you did order those back in December, it does look like they should be arriving at your doorstep pretty soon here. And then with that, the other thing, and we haven't confirmed how this is working yet, but those apparently will give you access to the figurines in game. And so we're not sure how that's working yet or if that's coming in with this update. But that's just another thing I wanted to mention because that was part of the whole YouTube's figurines campaign there. And yeah, that about does it for what's going on in Rust development and what we're looking at seeing for the update next week. Miss D, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, we do. But I just figured out that I don't think you can repair the motorcycle while driving in the passenger seat. Yeah, I'm Try not surprised by that. Yeah. Well, maybe that's changing. You know, you can do it in the other vehicle. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Anyways, is there any word on the SKS t uh, rifle? Yeah, I think there was like a commit or two this month on the SKS rifle, but I'm not, I haven't gotten any confirmation that it is actually coming in to the game. They're, they've also been working on a new Frontier Hazmat DLC and some other things and a Frontier Hatchet. And there's also work on the Blunderbuster or Blunderbuss, which is going to be a new uh, shotgun, kind of rusty, single shot, probably powerful shotgun. And all those are still kind of up in the air as to when they are coming in. Nothing's confirmed for coming in for the update next week. So we'll keep you posted. And it does look like the SKS rifle is pretty much ready to go. So I wouldn't be shocked if it comes in next week, but I have no confirmation either way at this point. But we'll keep you posted as we get closer to the 4th of July. Will the Twitch drops uh, run for a week? Like usual on the 26th of July. 
Yeah, it seems like probably the Twitch campaigns are generally going to be a week long. That's what we've seen in the past, and I haven't gotten any indication or word that it's going to be otherwise. And so, yeah, I imagine at the end of July, one of the last weeks, we'll we'll see those Twitch drops for the Fancy Orb uh, Warfare event go live. Um, will the single motorcycle fit through a sheet door? Good question. And it looks like it might, but maybe we can test that out real quick. Uh, is F1 kill possible while cuffed? Uh, no, I don't believe so. You can't uh, just suicide as you're all cuffed up. Yeah, I don't think so. Can you test the voice in-game with the hood on to see if the voice is a bit muffled? Ah, uh, good question. Yeah, we could probably see that real quick. Yeah, I and mean, if you guys want to test the way I got my uh, audio set up at the moment, I won't be able to do it in game. Uh, and then if you guys can. Yeah, I actually am not sure. I have. I think I have all my stuff disabled. Let's see if I could do that real quick, though. <laughs> uh, was it the motorbike that you wanted to see? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see what else there is. Do the motorcycles require parts? Uh, no. From what we're seeing, they do not require parts. And here, Misty, um, let me put a hood on and then try to talk in game. Uh, let me turn the volume up. Hold on. Okay, I turned you up. Try talk. Keep talking and then and then try to take it off. No, I don't hear any difference. Yeah. But good question. Valid thought yeah, for, for sure. sure. Would make sense if it did. Is water visibility can't see any sharks underwater fixed. I haven't, I don't recall seeing any commits around that. I don't know if we could like head over to the water real quick and, and show everyone what it's looking like. Uh, yeah, but my so sense is it's the same. It just water vi visibility has changed at all because there's been a lot of complaints about poor visibility in the water. Sure, yeah, I haven't seen any commits, but we can sure have a look. Can you get a bike onto the back of a Scrappy? Ooh, another good, good question. question. Yeah, let's test it in a sec. What else is? I'm not sure. Was it uh, visibility or texture that we were talking about with the water? Visibility, you can't see sharks underwater. Oh, okay. That's going to be a quite hard to test, but yeah. Just... Sure. You could also potentially teleport any shark. Uh, that's a good idea, yeah. Just on 10 of them or something. Just for fun. <laughs> What's their reasoning behind adding calves? I have a feeling they're going to be abused by Zergs. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak directly to the reasoning because we're not developers of the game and, you know, we don't work for Face Punch or anything like that, but... I imagine that they just wanted to add this dynamic in the game of being able to take a prisoner a little bit and and uh, push that prisoner around. And so that's what we've got coming in. Uh, when's horse fix? And I don't think there is an issue anymore, is there? I'm pretty sure it was fixed like a month ago. Yeah, there were a bunch of fixes to horse movement that have gone live in the past month or so. Um, it's not to say the, the movement is perfect or anything like that, but when they added in the reversing of horses with the update earlier this month, there were a lot of fixes that went live with that as well. And so I'm not sure if any more are planned, but... Yeah, also the, uh, the one where they couldn't get into Outpost is also fixed, I believe. Yeah, yeah, good call. Mm.
Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm in the same boat. I'm not sure uh, what it looks like on normal uh, on the normal branch at the moment now. So, but let us know if it looks better. Also, does all the new vehicles go under a garage store so you can have it inside a garage? I imagine yeah, they, they do. Yeah. yeah. Garage doors, they do I mean, that. if you can get a car in, I would think it's weird you can't get a bicycle or a motorcycle in. Oh, no, you can. Yeah, for sure. For the yeah. garages, definitely have tested that. Yep. Yeah, cool. And how do you get the bikes and the motorbikes? They are just at the moment spawning around the map at various places. So when the map loads and the server loads up, uh, they are just spawning around. Uh, it looks like there's more pedal powered bikes than there are actual motorbikes, but they're spawning not only around the roads, but also at certain monuments like uh, I believe the gas station and things like that have some spawns for these bicycles so and motorbikes. So that's how you're going to be finding them, just looking around the map. Actually, I noticed something with the new um, the ice shop. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure last week, the back one, you could use that as a shop as well. But this week, it's like just for the looks, it seems like. That's all, and only the one on the left and right side is shoppable. Oh, for the traveling vendor? Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I wonder if that'll stay or if that's just something going on with staging at the moment. Did they have that little fence up there, the wired? I'm pretty sure they didn't last week, did they? They did. No, I think that's... Bob did they? I'm just... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I forgot. That's okay. Yeah, it's hard to... Isn't it because I remember, remember trying, week to, week. trying to injure myself on it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, do team markers identify you're in distress when you're cuffed? Not at the moment, no. There's no nothing that helps you, <laughs> to be fair. No kind of signal to anyone. Uh, we just got a gifted sub from Sophie. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Sophie, Ken. And that's a great opportunity to just thank everyone for tuning in. You know, a lot of people assume we're developers of the game sometime or that we're on the Face Punch payroll, and neither of those are the case. We are just an independent organization that loves reporting on development news and running the best servers that we can. And the only way we can do that week after week, month after month, we've been doing this now for going on... 10 years actually over 10 years and the only way we've been able to do this over that time is through the support of the community so to everyone who watches every week to people who give bits and sub on twitch and to our wonderful beautiful loyal vip customers thank you all so much for the support because we wouldn't be able to do this without you and yeah much love to you all um so let me see here is there a time limit for how long you can keep someone prisoner before they either die or maybe cut loose? Well, they have the mini game where they can get out by holding the left mouse button for 60 seconds uninterrupted, aka they haven't been pushed. So it really is if, if you're not next to the person who's cuffed and actively like kind of pushing them around, then they will eventually be able to break out of the cuffs and so that's kind of probably going to be the most likely scenario i don't know if by that point you'll be locked in a room somewhere or something but then once you break out of the cuffs then you can you know uh as the game now calls it respawn and you know be on your merry way and i think you can lock out too like all the four if it's too much you know yeah, you can, of course, yeah, they can't stop you from turning off the game and then you're just a sleeper with cuffs. Yeah, yeah. So let's do a recap, Bucks. All right, cool. And we might have a bit of a shorter one today because I'm not going to go into it, but there's a bunch of stuff going on over here. But nevertheless, let's do a little recapity cap. We are over here on the normal staging branch and we're getting a good view of what is probably going to go live in the update next week. The update, of course, is next week, July 4th. It is expected at the normal time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. BST, and it does force a map wipe. There is no sign of a forced blueprint wipe, but there are some cool things coming in. Real quick, before we get into those things, Twitch drops are gonna be happening every month for the rest of the year from the looks of it. So that's gonna kick off with 
the Fancy Orb Global Warfare event, the actually Global Warfare 2 event, at the end of July. And it'll likely run for a week and just feature some Rust content creators and stuff like that. And then for the months going forward, uh, we'll continue to have some Twitch drops, which is cool. But as far as what's coming in for the update next week, one of the big things is a new type of vehicle, and those are bikes. At the moment, there's two types of uh, main types of bikes. There's pedal-powered bikes and motor bikes, and each type has its own variant of a two-seater and a one-seater. And so there's the one-seater motorbike, and then there's a motorbike with a little sidecar that you can have a friend uh, join you along for the ride and kind of a similar situation when it comes to the pedal powered bikes Now these bikes are just spawning around the map when you come up to them You don't need to fix them or anything like that like cars They don't have individual parts like cars But of course as you would figure the motorbikes do run on low-grade fuel and So you'll need some low-grade if you want to get one of those motorbikes started up the pedal powered You just hop on and you can go both uh, forms of bikes have a sprint or boost functionality. It's kind of like holding left shift and you see the sprint bar that will slowly go down or a, if you're in a motorbike, a boost bar and those will get you a little extra speed. And it's a fun new way to traverse around rust. It looks like it's not super easy to get the motorbike into the scrap heli, um, but you can get them through doors and garage doors and things like that for storage. Maybe if I'm, we build a uh, foundation with a ramp. Maybe a little ramp. ramp. Yeah, I'm going to try yeah, that. Yeah, Hold on. Sure. That's it. I was just trying to do it lazily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on with the bikes. Again, there's it looks like four bikes coming in in total, and they're just spawning around the map. You'll just find them at monuments and along the road. Now, speaking of along the road, there's also a traveling vendor that looks to be coming in. That's that ice cream truck looking thing. It's got two sentry turrets on top so you're not going to want to go try to blow this thing up because not only is it invulnerable but those sentry turrets will engage with you pretty quick and just start lighting you up but what you do want to do potentially when you see this traveling vendor and you can see it via an icon on the in-game map is go and check out the vending machines that it has to offer because it's offering a variety and it looks like a semi-random, depending on the spawn of the vending machine, offering of various different items, weapons, tools, and stuff, all for sale for scrap. And it even has resources and things like that. Now, one thing that's interesting about this as well is they're playing with a dynamic pricing model, where basically as someone purchases an item, if three people purchase the same item, the item's price will go up by 10%. And this is gonna be something based on the sales over the last 24 hours, apparently. And so it's gonna be an interesting thing for the economy in Rust where the really popular items will go up in value. And uh, if no one's buying them, then they'll stay at the base price. At the moment, this looks to be only trying out for the traveling vendor, but there is potential and some murmurings about this going live for some of the other NPC vendors around the map, like at Outpost and things like that. And that would be an interesting new dynamic for the economy of Rust. But yeah, everything just costs a certain amount of scrap and you can go purchase it just like at any other vending machine. And you can even on the map uh, see what is available. Uh, is that correct? Um, Say what again? I don't think so at the minute. Or can no. you not now? Yeah, no, um, no. now I'm. I said that I'm like, oh wait, no, you can't. Um, no, so yeah, so it looks like for now, yeah. Yeah, you just have a marker, so you're not going to be able to see. You're going to really have to go to the vending, uh, the traveling vendor, to actually see what is available for sale. Um, keep in mind, all this is subject to change between now and next week, and we'll have a full write-up on next week's update post on Rustify.com that explains everything you as a player will want to know about these new items. But yeah, that's what we're seeing now. It looks like there'll be one traveling vendor per map. It'll just kind of drive around the road, and then if you come up to it, it will stop for you and give you an opportunity to purchase some goods for scrap. 
The other thing we have that looks like it's coming in for the update next week is the hood and cuffs items and new functionality. This is basically a functionality that will allow you to take a prisoner. If someone is downed in the wounded state, you can hop some cuffs on them and a hood. And at that point, it will hinder their vision and their ability to open the in-game map. And uh, with the cuffs on, you can kind of push them around and limit their movement as in they can't like mount horses or vehicles or things like that. You can see a bit out of the bottom. And so if you like kind of look up and use that little slit at the bottom, then you can kind of see around, but you can't see your in-game map or anything like that. And you are only able to cuff someone who is in the wounded state. Now, if you do get cuffed and you're allowed up, then you can hold the left click. And if you can hold that successfully for 60 seconds, it will actually kind of break the cuffs and, and allow you to break out, so to speak. The trick with that, though, is if your captor or anyone else around you uh, pushes you during that time, it stops the progress bar of that kind of breakout of the cuffs mini game. And so you'll want to watch um, if you do cuff someone, you'll want to be pushing them around a bit and uh, so they don't escape. And if you are cuffed, then you'll probably want to try to run around and all that stuff. And you can also force mount them into can vehicles. Can I interrupt for a cool. sec? Yeah, yeah. I'm mounted in the mo in the <laughs> motorcycle with cuffs on. That's it. I yep. just found the option. You can know, yeah, you can force mount and you can tell them to uh, change seat as well there. But I don't think this yeah. is kind of working, but yeah, it should. It probably will. All right. But yeah, so the idea is you can kind of <laughs> cuff someone, you can put them in a vehicle against their will, and they can't really do anything because you also, when you're cuffed, you can't suicide. Uh, so it's an interesting new dynamic that will, um, I'm sure, <laughs> be used next week yeah. when, when this comes in. And uh, yeah, so that's the hood and cuffs. And like all this other stuff, we'll have more information before this goes live next week on our article on rustify.com. There's also a couple other things being worked on that uh, probably won't make it in for next week. There's initial work on a crocodile, so it looks like a new type of animal is coming in. Uh, there's more work on the cliffs rework, which is just redoing a lot of those cliffs around procedurally generated maps. There's also more work on the Radtown Redux, which is a new type of monument that's kind of that throwback to the legacy Radtowns. And yeah, I doubt any of those things are coming in next week. But on top of that, we do have some optimizations to wire slacking coming in. And uh, also this small quality of life thing when it comes to skinning shipping containers, where when a player right clicks a shipping container block while holding the spray can, it will select the last used spray color in the pie menu by default instead of the color of the shipping container block they right clicked on. So that should make it a little easier for you to, uh, you know, uh, skin your base and get it the color you want with less clicks and mouse movement. And yeah, that about does it for what, that recap and what's going on in Rust development for the week. Before we wind this puppy down, any other quick questions we want to handle? That's one, and then we got Sophie giving 1500 bits and saying, you guys are a huge impact of the Rust community. A lot of people cherish your showcases and answers to a lot of players' questions. A lot of love, guys, and then heart, heart. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much for that for that gift and for the kind words. I really appreciate it. It brings a big smile to my face, and you're so welcome. Yeah. Uh, can you put locks on the bikes? And I just tried that, and you cannot. At least not yet. Yeah. Yep, I think that's it. All right, well, cool. Well, with that, we're going to wind this puppy down a little early. Nevertheless, we will be back same time, same place next week to give you an update stream. Again, the update is coming out next week at the regular scheduled time, which is basically just one week and 21 minutes from now. And it will come with a force wipe, no sign of a force blueprint wipe. But we'll also on rustified.com have all the information uh, for what you as a player need to know about these new things coming into the game. And as always, just thank you so much to everyone tuning in and for watching and for all the love and support. Thank you, Artemis and Miss D, as always, for being my co-MCs here. You're welcome, as always. Cool. And with that, we're going to wind this down. I hope you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful wipe. This is Bugs, signing off. <laughs>